Fall 2014 Language Arts Pilot Training, Grades K-1. Flying Start to Literacy is an award-winning, comprehensive early literacy program. It supports the systematic development of reading strategies and skills in young students, focusing on the interrelated elements of beginning texts to scaffold early reading success. These elements include key vocabulary, high-frequency words, text types, text complexity, phonics, fluency, and comprehension, the links between reading and writing and assessment that informs instruction. We're pleased that you have chosen to pilot Flying Start as part of the Gwinnett County Language Arts Adoption Process. We appreciate your confidence in the program and are certain that you and your students will enjoy working with these materials in the weeks to come. I'm Lynn Reggett and I'm part of the development team that develops the Flying Start to Literacy materials. How was the Flying Start to Literacy program developed? What research supported its development? Flying Start was developed from a partnership, um, from a publisher, from some academics, from some teachers, really looking for material that reflected the very best of research and the very best of pedagogy and what teachers really need to be really effective instructors of young children in their classroom. And tell us a little bit about the research. So, the research is extensive. It's research that comes from all around the world. It's research that uh, reflects the work of Mari Clay about what reading is, that reading is, as she would say, um, a message-getting, problem-solving activity uh, that increases in power and complexity the more it's practiced. So very much knowing that while children need a set of strategies and skills, the aim is for children to be able to think and talk about what they read. So a very meaning based, but understanding also that there are elements of reading when they're integrated, when they're put together, that's when children are really powerful readers. How does the program support the acquisition of content area or key vocabulary? Let me show you. Uh, we know as teachers of young students how important it is that students um, recognize and can name shapes. So the Flying Start to Literacy um, resource has this amazingly supportive vocabulary starter. So one of the things that a teacher you could choose to do is to choose to use this vocabulary starter to support the kids naming or understanding of those shapes. And you'll see that not only do we have pictures of these shapes, but we also have the vocabulary word underneath. And then those same words, those same shapes, are reinforced in a reader. So if I show you, there are the same shapes. And inside the book, if I use the one that's about a square, the students encounter this vocabulary word in a simple sentence, but it's a different sentence than they would encounter in here. So we've found that by giving children multiple opportunities to read this content vocabulary, it's reinforced it's easy for the children to recognise, and as we know, as kids become more competent readers, then those vocabulary words become a basis for thinking and for understanding the world around them. What supports content area vocabulary after the emergent stage? So, all the content vocabulary, the key vocabulary um, that we know is developmentally appropriate for young children, this same content vocabulary is followed through as the levels um, extend and the reading gets more complex. So if I give you an example, here's a book at level F. The insects in here, for example, this ant, the vocabulary word ant is in this book. This has already been introduced and read many times as the children systematically go through our material. But at the same time, in this narrative, the same vocabulary, ant, appears 
in a story form. So students have multiple opportunities um, to extend and grow their content vocabulary. Why is it important for students at this level to encounter high frequency words as often as they do in Flying Start? What we need is automaticity. That's one of the things that Mari Clay helped us think about in terms of early reading development, that kids encounter these high frequency words so many times and in so many contexts that they become automatic. And so the kids don't really have to process them at all. And that, of course, helps lead towards fantastic fluency and flexibility as a reader. So one of the things we've done in Flying Start is to make sure these high frequency words are also repeated, a bit like the content vocabulary. But we've been very, very thoughtful about the syntactic context in which those words are met. So if I give you an example, this again is a book from an early emergent stage, it's from um, level A, and it's a book obviously about pets. And in this book, there is a re reoccurring pattern as you would expect. Here is my dog, here is my fish, and the, the pets are named as you go through this book using this pattern. So you can see that here is at the beginning of the word with a capital letter. Now we want this word here to be made and known automatically. So what we've done is we've taken the same content words, the same pets, and we've put here in a different position. So this says my dog is in here. Adding a little bit more meaning because this of course this book, this early, is about meaning, it's about the places your pet might live in your house. And then we've got my fish is in here. So what we find is the students have multiple opportunities to read the word here, but they're becoming automatic in their processing because they see it in different contexts. As the levels progress, why does Flying Start continue to emphasize high frequency words? As we add new vocabulary words, new high frequency words to our books, we make sure those same initial 26 high frequency words are introduced again and again and again. So this makes students very confident. Um, as I said, it makes the m meaning making so much easier because at each individual word level, the child doesn't have to process because it's now in their automatic language system. Why is it important that children encounter a variety of text types in their reading? Well, we know that the goal is that students become independent readers. Barry Clay would say that they develop a self-improving system. And so it's very important that right from the beginning that young students have a very diet of material to read. And Obviously, they need exposure to informational text and to narrative text because one of the things that we know that good readers do, good readers are flexible. Good readers can navigate a story, but they can get information from an informational text. So we have deliberately paired our books so that for each set of books, there is a piece of text that is within the informational band and a piece of text which is in the narrative band. So if I give you an example, this is a pair of books from level F. This is a book called Animals That Need Mud. This is an explanation. And to make it easier for teachers, one of the things that we've done is we've put the text type in the inside cover. This inside cover is a great resource for you it's a quick and easy way to get an overview of how this book works and what it offers. Alongside that goes a narrative, and again, inside the cover, there is the text type listed. If I move up to some higher level text, these are some texts at level J. This is a report about people who swim in the ice. And again, in the inside cover, the text type is listed. 
This is the matching pair that goes with it, the lucky fishing hat, and again inside the text type. By exposing students to variety of text types, this is when they develop a variety and a flexibility of reading strategies. And when I talk about reading strategies, I don't just mean strategies as content. Marie Clay said to us that our goal is to help students become strategic readers. And strategies are mental activities that you do in your head. So by giving students a variety of text types over all these levels, then we're able to make sure that children really are flexible and good readers and college ready. In what ways does Flying Start meet the expectations for text complexity found in the Common Core Georgia Performance Standards? Well, we know, don't we, that we want students to read increasingly longer and more challenging texts. But in order to do that, we've got to start students at a very supportive level. So in Flying Start, we have a range of books that obviously increase in difficulty um, as the students move in their developmental process. We, make, we take lots of considerations. It's easy to think that the vocabulary gets harder, and that's one consideration, but we're more thoughtful about that. We really think about the cognitive load and what is accessible for young students. So, for example, at level B, here's a, um, a personal narrative where a child is working with her grandpa. The kinds of concepts that are in here, that adults and children can do things together, that's a very accessible, child-friendly. If I move to the opposite end, to something at level L, then obviously at the conceptual level, at the concept or ideas level, we need to be both supporting but also challenging students. So here's an informational text at level L called The Right Tools for the Job, where there's big ideas about animals are adapted in terms of their body shape and the parts of their bodies so they can survive in their environment. So across our levels, we increase at the ideas level. We're also very thoughtful about text layout and the overload of print. So at level D, we think very carefully about how much text is on a page for an informational text. Obviously, as you move through our levels, we've thought very carefully then about the challenges kids could be supported at as they read increasingly longer pieces of text. But we're always thinking right from the beginning, right through about the kind of visual support, about the kind of photographs that would support this. So there is a sequential increase in complexity, but it's very carefully nuanced. So students are supported right through this developmental process. To what extent are phonics and phonemic awareness taught in Flying Start? How systematic and explicit is that instruction? So again in our Flying Start literacy material, we systematically introduce phonics in a way that is developmentally appropriate. So obviously in the early levels we're thinking very much about those consonants, those dominant consonants first that kids can access and as we go through we're introducing consonant blends but also the single vowel sounds and then complicated vowel sounds. So if you look on, online at our teacher material you will be able to see on the charts how systematically and easy for this is to follow. However we also support you in this by making sure that on the lesson plan that the phonics aspect that are covered in these two books are on the lesson plan for you to see very easily. And then inside the lesson plan, we've developed a task or an activity under working with words where you might think about the phonics and uh, phonemic awareness exploration kind of tasks 
that you can use with students. So in both places, you'll find this very easy to use in terms of teacher resources. How does Flying Start support the interconnectivity between fluency and comprehension? Yes, fluency and comprehension go together. If we read too slowly, if we read at the word level, we're not going to be able to get the meaning of any text that's presented to us. So one of the things that we've done in Flying Start to Literacy, embedded within the lesson itself is the idea that we should be reading for meaning and reading fluently. But one of the things that we offer teachers in our teacher support material is some suggestions that when students return to the book, we call this developing fluency, that students uh, have opportunities to revisit the book with an emphasis on fluency. And for both of the books and the pair, we've got some suggestions and some tasks that students could do, mostly independently, in order to build up that automaticity at the high frequency level, that reading with phrasing and fluency, that reading with expression that good readers do. How are reading and writing integrated in Flying Start? Well, reading and writing are reciprocal processes, that's what Mari Clay told us. And so as students learn to be readers, we know in our Flying Start to Literacy resource how important it is that as part of reading, students also are engaged and do some writing. In our lesson plans, which are very easily navigated, uh, they're easy to read, and I'll explain some more about our lesson plans later. But one of the things I want to point out to you, to you is that as part of the lesson plan, if you look in this column here, is there is, is a section where the students are asked to, to do some independent writing. However, the important part of this lesson plan is that the teacher models some writing. You'll find really useful and helpful suggestions about how students might be stretching out words, how they might be using the high frequency words that they've learned as they read, putting into their reading. So that reading and writing part is a really important activity or task that students can engage in to make those letters and sounds become reciprocal processes for them. Are there opportunities for ongoing assessment in Flying Start? As well as the kind of assessment or testing that we might do at a school or a district level, the ongoing assessment that we do in our classrooms is absolutely crucial to the philosophy behind Flying Start to Literacy. So what we've included in our, our teacher support material is suggestions what, about what you might be looking for, um, checklists for teachers to be tracking students and following students. But the most important thing is as you teach, you are getting alongside students and really noticing and watching what they do because that's the essence of responsive teaching. How will students be engaged and motivated by Flying Start? Young readers bring to reading their own motivation. But we know that they can easily be put off if they're faced with material that's not appropriate to their needs, that they're not successful about, that they're not interested in. One of the things that is so gratifying when you work with students around Flying Start material is that on the back of our box, we show all the books at the level. And so, as soon as you give students one of our books, I see students do this everywhere. And what they do is they immediately turn over and they look at the books that they've read before, but they also can tell with this little thin line here, the pairs of books that go together. And so there is amazing conversations and saying, I can't wait, wait to read this book. And so we know teachers are motivating, but materials themselves need to be motivating. They need to have topics that uh, meet kids at their point of interest and needs, but also topics that extend children's thinking so that we're not just living in the world that we know, but we're learning about the world as we read.